With the release of Spider-Man No Way Home, it gave us a new look at some of our famous Spider-Man villains in live action. So, I'm going to be ranking all 17 Spider-Man and Venom villains from the worst to the best in my opinion. Hi, my name is Nathan, and this is a channel where I talk about a bunch of movies. If you're new here, down below in the comment section, share what you think are the worst Spider-Man villains. This is a part one of two. These are the bottom eight, and... I will be doing the bottom, the top nine another day. Also, also, if you enjoyed this video, click that like button. And and if you consider subscribing, click that subscribe button as well. I have done more Spider-Man content like this. And with that said, I'm going to begin. In last place is Rhino. This is a mediocre villain and just simply a bad idea if, in general. Now, they cast Paul Giamatti as a bad idea for a villain, and his time in the movie, he barely gets any screen t time, he's kind of played for jokes because his pants get pulled down, and he just robs banks at the beginning of the film, saying... at the end of the film with a robot suit, which just looks ridiculous. So, this is a character that barely got any screen time, and they wasted the talent of a great actor. In number 16, Venom. A total waste of what should have been a great character. Now, it feels like Venom, he should be this great, he should be a great character because he is one of Spider-Man's arch enemies. But, Topher Grace is an odd pick to play Eddie Brock, and it's well documented Sam Raimi had no interest or connection to this character. So, you end up having the Venom storyline with Peter doing some of the most embarrassing things in the entire Raimi trilogy. Also, whenever the action sequences do happen with Venom, they always, like, remove his mask to show Topher Grace's face. So... That just seemed weird to me, and Topher Grace's face on top of a CGI body doesn't work at all to me, so this is what it was a total waste of what should have been a great character. Next up is the new Goblin from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, or the Green Goblin from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, basically, um, I actually really enjoyed this character when he was Harry Osborn, Peter's best friend. The two have a great dynamic with one another. But what he turns into Green Goblin gets this very cartoonish goblin disease. He has a mean streak throughout the film. As you have him, um, he's like being so aggressive towards his friend, which is very odd. And they took things too literally. They turned him into an actual Green Goblin. And what, by the time you get to the end of the movie in the final battle... Like, he, he is the one that causes Gwen to die, and that's a very emotional scene. But he killed Gwen on accident, so it wasn't really that compelling either. So, for me, so for me, Green Goblin is a villain that is not really that good. Although, I did like Harry Osborn and his dynamic with Peter Parker. Number 14, the new Goblin from Spider-Man 3. Among these same lines, this is a character that's aggressive towards Peter Parker. And while he does have a redemptive arc throughout the movie, I simply do not think that Harry Osborn needed a redemptive arc in the Raimi trilogy. So let's start off talking about how um, he plays out into things. So he starts off as Harry Osborn, Peter Parker's best friend. Again, I like their relationship with one another. But well, I think that the new Goblin himself is just way too unlikable in Spider-Man 3 as well. He, as Peter is telling the new Goblin to um, Harry to move on because, and he's not trying to tell him the truth about Green Goblin, he's pushing him away. So, it's tough to root for a character that behaves like this. Also, I think that, um, I think that the, the CGI in, in the New Goblin's fights is just way too over the top, and it, it's just ridiculous. 
Because Spider-Man 3, I've said it before, that this is the movie where he went so over the top with the CGI. So the action with him isn't really that good. So, this is a villain that I enjoy, yet again, I enjoy Harry Osborn. But I don't enjoy his version of the Goblin. At number 13, Riot from Venom. This is probably one of the most uninteresting and boring characters on this entire list. So, he is kind of the character that we follow around for the first... 30 minutes of the movie. He appears in the movie before Venom. He possesses an old lady to another old lady to a little girl and to Carlton Drake. But there's not much interest here in the character. Like, I simply did not care about the plot that was happening with Riot. And adding to that, I think that Riot is a very generic symbiote, I would say. Because, especially uh, when you get to the final battle, you'll see what I'm talking about as he's fighting Venom and, and they have two creatures who look very alike from each other and it's strange that the final battle takes place on a dark bridge that's dimly lit, the shots are shaky, and it's nighttime, so it's very dark. You can't even see all that much that's happening. But the action scenes with Riot aren't good because of that reason. It's because it gets to the point in the final battle where it's just like two blobs like mushing together. And so, like, Riot, he's okay, I guess, but I just saw zero interest in this character. Next up is Mysterio. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion, but in my opinion, I actually still really enjoy Jake Gyllenhaal's performance as the fake hero, as the manipulator, as the illusionist. I enjoy a lot of that stuff. But when you look at Mysterio in general... He's just, his plot is just one of those other ones where he's scorned by a hero, and then he wants to get revenge by becoming the greatest superhero of all time. So, that's a plot we've seen many times before, so we're just like, right, we get it, you're trying to be the greatest superhero of all time. And even after Tony Stark is dead, that, like, that just did not make sense at all to me. Speaking of Mysterio, what exactly does he plan to do after he becomes the greatest superhero of all time anyway? We just know that he wants to become the greatest superhero because of his scorn for Tony Stark. So, this is a character that, while I enjoy his performance, he has one of the best performances of all of these villains. I just don't think that his plot holds up, and it's pretty generic also. And then we have Dr. Octopus, Olivia Octavius from Spider-Verse. Now, this character is another one that's fine, but not great. So, I'll start off by saying that it's interesting in the way she's used in the film because she, it, it, it's played by a, as a twist reveal that she is Dr. Octopus in Miles Morales' universe. That was a fun little thing, and she does get some cool action sequences in the film, but in general, we don't get any backstory. We don't get we don't get any motivation for why she's helping Kingpin. But we do get some cool action sequences, so at least that's something. And she's also voiced by Catherine Hahn, who could just do these kinds of voices correctly. It's kind of fun to see, but other than that, there's just not much here. And we'll close things off with Shriek Francis Barrison from Let There Be Carnage. And this one is tricky for me to place because at the beginning of the film, she's given a backstory as she has a relationship with Cletus and was taken away from him. And she is out and she wants to get out of Ravencroft to to go with Cletus. But other than that, there's just not much here yet again. You have this character that just plays out to be the love interest of Carnage, Cletus Cassidy, I meant. So, other than she gets a few moments here and there, and so a few action sequences, she's, she's, she doesn't do anything. She's just there to be the love interest, and then she, get, and then she dies. So, by, by being crushed by a bell. So, it, it isn't, that isn't really that compelling. She doesn't get it any further backstory as so, so she's just there so there you have it those are the eight worst spider-man villains to me be sure down below in the comment section to share the eight worst spider-man villains to you also i 
we'll be doing a part two of this. You could check that out in the future because I haven't done the video yet. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and be sure to subscribe. I've done more Spider-Man stuff over on my main channel. You could check that, that out right now and I will see you guys in the next one.